Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click that bell icon so you can get notified when I come out with new iOS tutorials. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to work on creating a new pop-up so we can finally add activities to the days in our itinerary or our trip. This should be our last pop-up for this project. And here's what it's gonna look like. Now, let's break it down a little bit. Okay, my patrons and I reviewed a couple of options and this is where we landed. In this video, we're going to start with implementing this UI picker view. Then in another video, we're gonna add this horizontal stack view, which will contain all the activities. And these are basically just UI buttons and images, but it's gonna work a little bit different because we only want one button selected at one time. So we want them to be mutually exclusive and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Okay, so let's jump into our project and let's start putting this pop-up together. Now, if you've already been following this series for a while, you've already created some of these pop-ups, so you should be totally familiar with that because we're gonna skip that in this video and get right into the showing of the pop-up and the populating of the UI picker view. Now, before we get into our project, let's just update our task because you know what? We haven't been in here for a while and I think we're a little bit behind on our tasks. <laughs> so let's update this board. Now, we know we've done this. We've updated this task and we've sorted the days by changing the title to a date. And so the dates are sorted automatically. So that is done. And we also created an alert so we can prevent ourselves from adding duplicate days. So this is also done. We can just move this to the done stack here. And now we're gonna be adding activities to the days in our trip. So this is pretty exciting. As you can see, we're getting close to finishing this app. Now this task right here, this is actually gonna be broken up into different videos but it's all the same task. Okay, so we're in the Xcode project, and if you've been following along, you don't have this folder or these two files. So I'm going to cover them with you here. Now I added these just to save ourselves some time. Like I said, you've already added a few pop-ups, so this stuff should be pretty easy for you. Basically, all I did is I went into the add day view controller, and I copied that, and I pasted the scene right in here. You know, I selected the whole scene right from the top and just pasted it in here. Then I made some modifications to it, such as the title where it says add activity. I added a picker view here, and then I added an extra text field because this one already existed. And then the buttons are already there as well. Now you may notice these controls, they have this blue line around them. And sometimes I use that just to get a better idea of the positioning and the frame or the bounds of my controls. You can turn that off. Let's see here, just go to canvas right here. It says show bounds rectangles. So turn that off and that gives you a better idea of what it looks like. Okay, so that's what the UI looks like. Now let's take a look at the code. Here I already hooked up some of our outlets. So I created some outlets for the controls. We have the title, the subtitle, and our picker view right here. We need an outlet for our title label because we set the font using our theme. And the reason why we do that is because if we ever want to change the theme, we can just change it one place and it takes effect throughout the whole app. Okay, and then I have some actions for our buttons. We have the save, the cancel. All they do right now is just dismiss the pop-up. Now, there's two properties here and let me explain these. So when it comes time to saving this activity, we'll have to know which trip we're going to be saving it to. So we need that value right there. And we're also going to bring in the trip model because the trip model has all the days and we're going to need all those days to populate our UI picker view. Okay, now when I run this application, this view, there's no way to access this view right now. We have an action sheet that shows an option to add a new activity, but it's not hooked up to anything. So let's take a quick tour of our app as it is right now and I'll show you our next step. Okay, we come into a trip and there's already days and activities for this one. So when we come here and we wanna add a new activity, nothing's gonna happen right now. Oh, <laughs> add new activity. Okay, so <laughs> something did happen. We added a little print command there, but it's kind of like a placeholder. So we can add our own function and show this pop-up. So that's our next step. Let's jump in there and let's do that. And where this action sheet pops up is in the activities view controller. So let's take a look here. And okay, this is where we add a new day. We show that pop up. So if we come up here, yeah, we have the activity action. 
And this is what we saw printed out. This is what we saw happening uh, down here. Uh, let's stop it real quick. Okay, now I believe when we're talking about action sheets, I want to show you two different ways on how you can hook up actions. And one of them was a function like we do here. And another one was we could just do it inline and write our code. So what I want to do for consistency's sake is I want to do the same thing that I'm doing here. So let me just copy that and highlight this code and we'll just paste. Okay, and instead of handle add day, we'll say handle add activity. Now this function doesn't exist, so let's add one. Okay, and it looks like in order for this to work right, you know, we have a parameter we have to pass in. So let me just copy that, just paste it in here. Oh, we got extra close parenthesis there that was added automatically. All right, there we go. And this error should go away. Okay. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get an instance of this view controller that we just added. So let's do that. And as you can see, it's pretty much going to be like this right here, except we're going to cast it to a different view controller. It's this view controller right here. And we're going to call it get instance. This is a function that we added as an extension. And then we need to cast it as the add activity view controller. There we go. Then once we add the view controller, we can present it. I'll just present view controller there. And we'll call true. And I don't think we need anything for the completion, so I'm just going to delete that. Okay, this should show our view controller. So let's test that out and just make sure everything's working fine. All right, great. And that's pretty much what we expected. We don't have anything in our picker view, so nothing's showing up there. Cancel it, it goes away. All right, that's fine. Now we want to populate that picker view. So in order to do that, we're going to have to set the trip model, just like we do right here. So let's copy that. We'll paste it in there. And this trip model, again, is a local variable. It has the current trip only in there, and that includes all the days. And I also have my attention on one other thing. Let's take a look at something here. Now, if we go into trip to Bali, that already has days added. So when we come here and we add an activity, we have days that we can add activities to. But if we go back to our trips and say we go to the Russian trip, add activity doesn't really make sense here because if we open it, there will never be any days in it until the person adds days first. So what I want to do is I want to disable that option until there are days available. I want this activity to be disabled. So how do I do that? So I can do that after I already created the action. What I can do is I can check to see if there's any days and I can disable that action. So for example, I could do something like this. If the trip model, and this is the current trip that's showing on the activities view controller, I can check the day models and see how many days are in there. And if the count equals zero, and you know, if there's no days, then we can just disable it. And there's this property here is enabled and we'll just set that to false. Okay, now when I run it, any trip that doesn't have any days, we'll just disable the add activity action because it doesn't make any sense to try to add one. Mexico, that doesn't have any days. So if we come here, it's disabled and nothing happens when I click it. And if I come to Bali, it is enabled because I do have days. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now, if you want, there's an easier way to shorten this here. You know, this property false here. We can just use this value right here. So for example, we can make it look like this. Just copy this. And then I'll copy this portion right here. So it's enabled if the count is greater than zero. And that's just a shorter way to write it if you wanted to. Oh, what's it saying here? Oh, okay. So here it doesn't like this because it doesn't know if trip model will be available or not. I know it'll be available because you can't get to the screen unless you have a trip model. <laughs> so I know there's going to be values in there. Okay, so we can delete that. And just to double check, we can run it again and go to Mexico and try to add an activity, and it should be disabled. Yeah, it's disabled there. 
And again, if I come back here, and activity is enabled. So that's good. Everything is working uh, just as we expected it to. Okay, let's get that UI picker view populated with our days. And we'll come down here. Let me explain something first. A UI picker view is a lot like any other control that shows repeated data or collections of data, like a table view. So as I set it up, I'm going to compare it to a table view because I know you guys have a pretty good grasp on what table views are and how they work. Now, as you might expect, a UI picker view has a data source and a delegate that we can use. Now, you don't need the delegate, but the data source is required in order for it to work. So what I'm going to do is this right here. So we come into view did load and we have our picker view. So it's a day picker view. And the first thing I'm going to set is the data source to self. So this class, this whole class add activity view controller will be passed in as the data source. And in order for that to work, I need to make this class conform to the picker views data source. And I'm going to do that with an extension just to keep the code separated. There we go. And then I'm going to conform to the UI picker view data source right here. Okay, that should get rid of that warning and give us a new one. And it's giving us a warning or an error rather saying that, hey, you have some required functions that you need to implement. So the cool thing about that is I can just click on here and say, yeah, show me what those functions are. There's only two. Now it says number of components. What the heck is a component? A component is like an individual column that can spin up and down. So looking at these two examples right here, the UI date picker in this case has three components because we're just showing the month, day, and year. So each of those columns that spin up and down is a component. And the one we're using only has one component because we're just going to show the title of our day, which is pretty much just a date, right? So another way to look at this or think about this is that each component is a section in a table view. And each of those groups of scrollable data are like rows in that section. So if you're looking at that date picker right there, you could think of it as having three sections. And in each section, there's a variable number of rows. So that should give you a good idea of what components are. They're just those columns of scrollable data inside of your picker view. And what do we need for this one? Well, we only have one column, so let's just return one. Okay, number of rows in the component. So how many rows are we gonna have in that section? Well, we need to get that from our trip model right here. And we'll return the trip model. And inside here, we wanna look at how many days we have. And days are what we're gonna be showing, so we'll just get the count of how many day models we have like that. All right. Now, this isn't going to work. It's going to give us the right amount of rows. <laughs> it's going to give us the right amount of columns, but we don't have any data we're going to be showing. So we need to be able to show data. And that's where the delegate comes in. And if you look at this, the data source is super simple. Just hold down command and go in there. And you'll see it just has these two functions that we just implemented. And we're going to use the delegate next. So I'm going to copy that. And then if we look at here, we want this one right here, title for row. And you see that returns a string. So this is what's going to add the string to each of the rows inside of the component or inside of the picker view. Okay, now to implement that, I need to add it here. Picker view delegate. And then what does it say, title for row? So I can just start typing in title for row. And it shows up right here. Just hit enter. So what am I returning? Well, we're going to return the data model. So let me just copy up to this part right here. And which data model are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the row. And if you look at this, you know, this row, it's an integer. Think of that as like the index path when using a table view. So this just tells you which row you're on inside of that component. But we do need the row right here to make sure we get the right day model. And from there, we want to get the title, which as you see here is a date. So we want to format that date, right? Otherwise, we're going to get day, month, year, hour, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. And we don't really need all that. 
Now earlier we created an extension on the date object. And if we go into resources and we go into extensions, we had this date extension right here. And we created this function to return a medium date, which is a string. And that formats it so it looks appropriate to the user's calendar and their regional settings. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this medium date function here. All right, let's just clean that up a little bit and let's run it and see how it looks. Oh, you know what? Before we run it, <laughs> there's one thing I forgot. This is something I always forget. And that is uh, setting the delegate right here. Now, as you guys know, from building this project, I always set the data source and delegate for my tables or my other controls uh, right here in the view did load. You don't have to do it this way. You can actually just set it through the storyboard if you wanted to. Like if you look at the storyboard, and if you select the picker view and you right click, you notice there's a data source and delegate. So you could add those uh, right to the view controller if you wanted to. But since I set it in the view did load, we're not going to do that. Okay, let's run it and see how it looks. Okay, now when I add activity, we should see these dates from February 9th. Uh, let's see here, February 9th down to February 13th. So let's double check that. There we go, February 9 to February 13th. Now from here, the idea is you pick which day you want to add the activity to. So maybe it's February 10th, which is my birthday. And you just type in what you're going to be doing, what, what your activity is. And then you click Save. And then what should happen is, under February 10th, right here, you'll see a new activity appear. So that's the idea we're going for. But for now, we completed the first step and we've got our picker view working. And as you saw, it's pretty easy. It's kind of like a table view. It has a delegate, a data source. We just return how many components, how many in that component or that column. And then we actually return what string we want to show using the title for row. Well, all right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for following along and good job on creating that new pop-up with the picker view. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it on social media with your friends so they can learn something new. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe now so you can keep following along easily with the next videos that come out. We're almost done, guys. We probably have like 10 videos left. If you want to help out this channel, go ahead and provide a translation for just the title in the description. Thanks and keep climbing that big mountain to be a great developer.